Hello and welcome back and today I want to readdress a video I did about a year and a half ago now. I want to talk about Thunderbolt NAS. I want to talk about pretty much the whole thing. What is it? What it isn't? And do you need it? Now, I say I'd made a video like this before. I made a video, I think, right at the start of 2019. Might have even been late in 2018. Because a number of you who are either considering utilising Thunderbolt NAS technology or already adopted it, weren't sure what you were getting or when you got it, it wasn't what you thought it would be. Half of it was when it was first envisioned Thunderbolt NAS, what they were promising and also what it involved into, but also because a lot of people's preconceptions about the concept of Thunderbolt storage and where that sits with Thunderbolt NAS because they're not actually simpatico. They're not exactly the same and there's actually a lot of difference between them and in some cases a Thunderbolt NAS might actually be worse for you than a Thunderbolt DAS, a NAS being a network attached storage device and a DAS being a direct attached storage device. Now, you might hear a slight hum in the background throughout the course of this video. That is because I've got two RAID units in the corner doing uh, RAID rebuilds for another video. Unfortunately, because of when this is being recorded during the COVID and self-isolation and stuff like that, the result is I'm actually in a much smaller knit environment than usual. So consequently, I'm quite close to some devices that I can't actually power down. So I do apologize if you hear to click some words there in the background of the NAS. But let's stay here on topic. Thunderbolt NAS, almost exclusively a technology from the guys at QNAP. In the, and they've got a number of different Thunderbolt solutions that have evolved over the last three or four years. It, when it first came out, it was very, very novel, with Thunderbolt being something that was predominantly used by Mac users and content creators who were dealing with large image files, videos, or photos, and were editing them and just needed nice, fast storage. With Thunderbolt 123 arriving at 10 gigabits per second, 20 gigabits per second, and 40 gigabits per second with their own respective theoret theoretical ma maximums. Now, that's important, theoretical maximums, because... With these data solutions, Thunderbolt says you can have up to this speed. But the media you use inside the devices you have and their individual power will reduce that maximum speed. So though you can work within this space of bandwidth, it's worth highlighting that some solutions will give you much, much less throughput within that giant bandwidth. And what we've done is we've broken down today's video into six areas. Um, between the Thunderbolt NAS solution range and where it sits in comparison to DAS. Each of these are going to go through the main factors that should help you decide between Thunderbolt NAS and Thunderbolt DAS and hopefully also educate you about both of these technologies overall. So let's deal with the first one. The first one is price. The price difference between Thunderbolt DAS direct attached storage and Thunderbolt NAS network attached storage is actually quite different. Thunderbolt NAS, when you see on, on the face of it, is a lot more expensive. It's often 1.5 to 2 times the price of a traditional DAS device. DAS, direct attached storage, is when you've got a bunch of drives, sometimes in a RAID, sometimes not, and this is connected to your Mac or PC system via Thunderbolt cable, and you can interact with the data. NAS, almost exactly the same thing on the face of it, but seemingly costing a great deal more. Why is Thunderbolt NAS so much more expensive than Thunderbolt DAS? That's because Thunderbolt DAS generally doesn't have much in the hardware department. It's, you know, it'll be a big metal chassis and there'll be other little connectors, maybe SD cards and stuff like that. But it doesn't really have much of a brain. The brain inside is generally known as an SOC or ROC, software on chip or RAID on chip. These mean that this chip inside is only really um, dedicated to just supporting a RAID structure, a redundant array of independent disks, or it's handling the transfer of data between the host connected device and the client Thunderbolt DAS. With that, there's normally a little bit of memory, half a gig, 512, maybe a gig of memory, but not much more than that. And on top of that, the software is pretty much dedicated to that internal chip. Now, if we look at Thunderbolt NAS, and it's been a lot more expensive, why is that? Thunderbolt NAS arrives with much higher reg CPUs. I think the lowest CPU in the Thunderbolt NAS that I've ever seen is a Celeron quad core. They go all the way up to i5s and i7s of six and more cores, hugely powerful devices. Along with that, they arrive with memory in huge gigabyte quantities, 16 gig, 32, even 64 gigabytes of memory. 
to keep things moving. And finally, the software inside being an entire operating system. So not even like that radon chip stuff there. You've got that, but then an entire operating system and software built around it. That's why the prices between them have such a disparity because DAS, its hardware and indeed software is lesser than that of the Thunderbolt NAS. Second area I want to talk about is speed. This is very linked to that first section with regards to price because weirdly, the more expensive of the two, Thunderbolt NAS generally gives you a slower speed than DAS, despite its 1.5 to 2 times price point more than Thunderbolt DAS, Thunderbolt NAS costs more, which I know is really weird. Um, it costs more and it's slower in terms of its overall performance. The reason being because the architecture of the way these drives, uh, these devices are built. Thunderbolt DAS is designed, and we'll go into more detail in point four, but Thunderbolt DAS is designed for one connected user. So you have one user connected to the DAS via Thunderbolt. NAS is designed to be accessed by many, many users at once. Not just Thunderbolt users, but Thunderbolt users, 10GBE, 1GBE users, even USB users in some cases, and allows the device to be connected to multiple users at once. So although one-to-one -one connection between your system and the Thunderbolt NAS will be less than that of the same number of bays and storage in the Thunderbolt DAS, it's not by much. It's only around 20% slower, maybe 30 if you don't get the right CPU, but you can have multiple users all still getting that 70% of the speed of one connected user DAS. So you've got multiple users all connected, and that's kind of another big difference between the Thunderbolt NAS allows multiple users to connect to the same data array and the same files at once, whereas DAS only allows one user. So that's one of those reasons for the speed and hardware difference. It's also the reason why NAS has greater CPU and memory quantities. Number three, I want to talk about a common misconception about Thunderbolt NAS compared with Thunderbolt DAS, and it's how it's perceived. Because the reason we have to call it Thunderbolt NAS, not just Thunderbolt DAS with some bells and whistles, is because you're not actually connecting to it in the same way. A Thunderbolt DAS system, once you connect it, is largely plug and play. A Thunderbolt DAS system, when you connect it, will just appear. Maybe your Thunderbolt controller will ask your permission to see it. Maybe if you're doing a raid on it, you need a raid controller on your Mac or Windows system, but predominantly it will just appear as an external drive in your file explorer, be it with a, window, um, a Mac and Finder or Microsoft, and it's just Windows Explorer and File Explorer, stuff like that. But a NAS doesn't work that way. It uses something called Thunderbolt over IP or IP over fun Thunderbolt. And what will happen is once you connect it by the Thunderbolt connection, so the Thunderbolt NAS, the Thunderbolt PC or Mac are connected by a cable, it will be seen as the same kind of protocol as a NAS would be using IP, inter, uh, internet protocol, basically an address, an IP address, 169-168 and some more typically. And the result is that you need the way, it's more like a mapped drive or a server than it is a standard connected drive. And that's one of the other reasons why the speed isn't quite up to that of traditional DAS because of Thunderbolt over IP. There are lots of reasons why Thunderbolt over IP is advantageous that we'll talk about in a bit, but overall, Thunderbolt NAS should be considered Thunder Thunderbolt over IP or TB to IP, whereas Thunderbolt DAS is just standard plug and play. You can still connect a Thunderbolt NAS as plug and play and it's largely the same, but when you're setting it up and connecting to it with software and other devices, it will be a lot more like mapping a network drive on a NAS than it will be just connecting it via USB. And on to number four, let's talk about 10GBE in particular. Between Thunderbolt NAS and Thunderbolt DAS, a lot of communities that are moving into this area of much faster acting data will be well aware of the subject of 10GBE. 10GBE is standard network interface times 10. The way all of your devices connect at home or in business, be they PCs, Macs, even printers and TVs and stuff, they all predominantly use one gigabit Ethernet as their own wired connection with some wireless exceptions. But 10GBE is fast going a much more affordable way for users to be able to interact with their data and particularly content creators to edit live. 
and 10 GBE is something that's included in every kind of Thunderbolt NAS, from QNAP at least anyway. There's a couple of exceptions with companies like QSAN, and 10 GBE that's included within um, Thunderbolt NAS is a big, big buying point. Because once you buy a DAS that's Thunderbolt enabled, you can connect a DAS to your PC or Mac system and then let other users kind of access it as a server, but then you have to leave the system running. It's not really designed for that. Whereas 10GBE is an option, insofar as with NAS, you can connect the NAS, a Thunderbolt NAS, to a PC or Mac system with a Thunderbolt cable, but then you can also access a 10GBE network connected to the NAS via the non-10GBE PC or Mac system, using it as what they call as T2E, Thunderbolt to Ethernet connectivity. Now, there are lots of ways in which you can adopt this into your workflow. You can either use the Thunderbolt system as a 10GB editing platform, uh, Thunderbolt editing platform, and then the Thunderbolt NAS connects to an existing 10GBE system you may have, because 10GBE is actually quite old and come down substantially in price, or you can use it within a Thunderbolt NAS to allow one connected user to um, edit video high-dense media using the Thunderbolt NAS connection, because you get a fire faster speed overall. Whereas other users might be editing raw photos or large files, but not quite as large as the videos, can use 10GBE. Still allowing you to use 1 gigabit Ethernet ports on a device to then edit general files, metadata, distribution, sharing, and more, all from in that one device that we'll talk on in more, more detail later on. The fifth point, as I've just touched on there, the big, big difference logically between Thunderbolt DAS and Thunderbolt NAS is to do with how many users connect at once. It's one versus many. Thunderbolt DAS is pretty much a one-to-one -one system. You can connect to Thunderbolt DAS, work on it, disconnect the DAS safely, take it over to your friend, pop it down, let them connect to it. And unless the system you're using is different to their operating system, like Mac and Windows use a slightly different file system, or the device you've connected it to is using a very bespoke RAID configuration that if it's ported over to another device will end up being reinitialized. Predominantly it's just a one-to-one -one connection or one person at a time. Thunderbolt NAS, however, allows multiple users to connect to it at once. Multiple users can connect via Thunderbolt, via 10GBE, via 1GBE. If you look at one of the biggest Thunderbolt desktop NASs out there, the TVS 1282T3, that device has got four Thunderbolt ports, two 10GBE ports, and four 1GBE ports. That is a whole host of users connected at once, as well as the device having eight hard drive bays, four 2.5-inch SSD bays, and two M2 SSD bays, which with the right caching system gives you an enormous amount of fast throughput in that storage pool that every single one of those connected users can access at exactly the same time time they are using thunderbolt over ip some of those people and some of them are going to be using 10 gbe and some using one just on a local area network with a connected switch or directly point to point but the point still remains that thunderbolt nas allows multiple users to work on one system at once something a daz doesn't give you so if that seems like something you're going to in you know in include into your workflow then definitely take that into consideration when buying one of these devices how many users are going to be interacting with it but moreover how often will they be doing it at the same time next and the last one is about that workflow we've kind of half touched on it but let's talk about some real world scenarios here because if you're considering a thunderbolt storage solution daz or nas in your creative workflow chances are you are dealing with mission critical data very few users use it uh, a thunderbolt DAS or a thunderbolt nas on a purely amateur nothing fun level they do it because the data they've got has either commercial value or personal value but one way or another it's mission critical data and mission critical data notwithstanding all the backups generally has a lot more to it than upload and dump and forget it has a lot more to in terms of interaction and closing of a project the most common examples that i've talked about indeed i've touched on several times here in the video is to do with content creators the current system with a daz not about daz at least would be that the photographer video editor whoever <coughs> video creator even they capture a project on one or more cameras one or more ca uh, phones one or more 
video cameras, camcorders, whatever. That gets transferred over to the DAS. Maybe it's through a connected cable onto a Mac or Windows system onto the DAS, or directly to the DAS if the DAS is smart enough. There are ones out there, some of the lacy ones are pretty clever. Um, <coughs> sorry, bad cough. Those users, they will end up with a storage device that has all of that data on it. They can then connect to it via Thunderbolt and then they can edit the files, edit raw data, package it, do what they need to do. That same user can then either do the closing of the project with the video editing, they can do the metadata around it, thumbnails, descriptions, basically metadata, the surrounding data, and they can also upload it to somewhere for people to access it, but they'll need a cloud or a NAS system in order to do that. However, most workflows have two, three, four, five, or more people in them with different people dedicated to the capturing, the video editing, the metadata, the distribution, the marketing, the sales, and more. They will all need access to the same files, which is on this DAS. So let's say we've all got a DAS each, and you're kind of transferring it and carrying your DAS over, copying it to another DAS. There's a lot of back and forth, a lot of mucking around, a lot of duplication of data unnecessarily, and a lot of ways in which you can forget what's done or what needs to be done. With a Thunderbolt NAS, the workflow is reinvented. You've got the same one or more people, the person who creates and captures the footage, that is transferred over to the NAS. Once again, it can be via a connected PC or Mac system into the Thunderbolt NAS, or uploaded directly from a, a mobile or internet enabled device to the NAS. From there, that's how things change. Yes, one user can access the data and do all of the editing, the post-production, the, the metadata, the packing, the distribution, the marketing, all of that if they want. But if you've got multiple users, those multiple users can all access the NAS in their own respective bespoke and fitting ways to edit files. Projects can be automatically moved between folders within the system with synchronization happening um, ad hoc or manually or semi-automatically and semi-intelligently with things like Q-tiering and more. And with the added benefit that each of those users can work on the same storage volume with no physical movement of a device. You can have another NAS to back up the NAS to. You can connect a Thunderbolt DAS to the NAS to back up and have two versions of everything constantly being synchronized if you so choose. But it's the invention, it's the reinvention of the workflow that's important there because it allows you to have a single system, a single investment onto a device that multiple users are working on rather than a single device that you're moving around to multiple people, which can lead to potential damage, which can lead to lost time in between, and a very little ability to overlap tasks and projects at once if only one user can access a given project at once. If you're only using it as a backup, less important. But as far as your workflow is concerned, a Thunderbolt NAS just moves everything around and keeps it, it reduces duplication, it keeps things safer if you back it up onto another device parallel with it, and moreover, it allows multiple users to work on one project with a certain amount of overlap, saving time, money, and hopefully bumping up the old profits. But that's all about you. These are the main reasons between Thunderbolt NAS and Thunderbolt DAS, and ultimately, a complete guide to Thunderbolt NAS overall. If you have enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, go to the link in the description to NAS Compares or visit span.com, the NAS experts. And otherwise, I will see you next time.